And again, if you're looking for 100% financing, does not have to be your first home. Give me a call. We'll talk about it. So one of the things I've been sharing with you, and all these people are talking about how prices are going to drop dramatically. For the last six, now, now I will tell you, interest rates, May 10th is when they're going to start dropping dramatically. That's when interest rates will start dropping because that's when inflation is going to start showing the, the big drop. May 10th, circle it on your calendar. I can say that right now because we're still in January. And if it comes to pass, we will be pulling out this clip and I'll tell everybody I told you so. If it doesn't happen, we'll just continue on talking and, and no one will know. <laughs> that's the way it works, Sean. I mean, that's... Uh, I'm a Dallas fan. That, that's, <laughs> yeah. Hey, I've been an Angel fan, so I understand. Uh, just, um, keep moving. Just, yeah, just keep on going. Just keep moving. Wait till next year. It's kind of the kind of like <laughs> Bears fans, right? Wait till next year. But here's the issue with houses. So what I've been saying right along is that we're not going to see a big drop in housing for one major reason. Those people that have a house, if they don't have a catalyst, they're not going to sell it. You don't say, okay, I think I want to go from a three-bedroom to a four-bedroom. And I want to go from a 3% mortgage rate to a 6% mortgage rate, unless I need to. Am I missing something there? Nope. No, no, so, absolutely not. Right? Nope. It, there's it, no it, reason to do that. that. Yeah. And I should, before I continue on with my, my uh, bloviating here, got Kelly and Sean Malone are in with us, Reliable Realty. Glad to have you with us Thank again. You. Good morning. So the bottom line here is they've got to have a catalyst. What are the catalysts that are getting people to move? Death, divorce, debt. Oh, and diamonds. And diamonds. Yeah. People get married. Okay. Right? That That is one of the catalysts. Yes. So, well, yeah, but the diamonds create debt. <laughs> okay. Well, you, you learn that after. Oh, okay. So so, so it's almost like a resort. We got a four diamond, 4D right. resort here. Four, right. Yes. Four, four Ds here. Okay. So that's what that's the catalyst. So do you see, are there a lot of those, those people are going to always be in the marketplace? Always. Yes. Right. There's nothing that's going to stop. I mean, people are always going to, unfortunately, they're going to always die. And there's going to be some issues going on. We have, uh, George Burns couldn't figure out how to, how to find a new way out. So I guess the rest of us are going to be, that's going to go on. Um, the divorces were, were just at the tail end of divorce season. Right. Well, COVID. COVID. COVID helped the divorce season. Yes. Okay. So yes. <laughs> that's right. Debt. We always seem to get into debt. And, mm -hmm. you know, I heard something new on one of the reports this morning fascinated me. That you know, there's a lot of people got into debt. Now we all, we always get into debt. I mean, it's just it's human nature. But one of the things that someone was made a comment on one of the business stations was we heard so long that all this inflation was transitory that people decided, you know, something. If I should believe the government, there's those there's those brainwashed people who believe the government. Right? They said, okay, well it's transitory, so I'll just pay for it on the credit card. It's going to go back down, right. and I'll mm -hmm. be fine. Yeah, it's true. Right. And, you know, that's really true, but it's not transitory and it's not going back down. So the bottom line is those, those people are, are still out selling. That's, gonna, that's not a whole lot of the marketplace. No, and it, it reflects in all the numbers overall. So the, you know, sales are down overall. The, you know, listings are down overall. Um, yeah, if, if people are inclined or they have a catalyst to sell, that those are the people on the market, staying on the market, you know, Look, listing timeframes in our zip code are, you know, over 100 days. Wow. Okay. What's your, where are you focused at? Uh, Temecula, 9592. Temecula. Yep. Okay. So that's the, that's the supply side of economics 101. Right. Right. And, you know, we can't control death and we could control divorce maybe. Um, we can control debt. People are going to get there. Uh, the diamonds, you can control that part. But diamonds actually helps on the demand side too. Sure. Oh, yeah. Right, because that's household right. formations. Right, right, yeah. right. We need. We know we need 1.4 million household, 1.4 million properties every year to add to, to just to cover for new home uh, for for household formations. Right, and to cover obsolescence. Yes. Yeah. So, if we're not now, and and the people that were moving, the people that died, they're they're not going to go out and buy a new house. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty 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 basic, right? I you, I go. I know. I got that one. And someone's got divorced, they're going to probably buy two houses or rent two. two. Right. Well, right. rent. Buy right or now. rent. Yes. One or the other. Mm -hmm. um, debt, you're going to be renting. So you're probably not going to be out there buying a house. Right. Um, so the bottom line is, is that you, you've taken out a huge segment of the population is uh, the, the move up buyer. Right. Are they gone completely? 
they're, they're priced out. Well, they're priced out part. and and waiting. You know, waiting. The, I'm having conversations with people who are who are waiting. It's like watching a you know jump rope, waiting to to jump in at the right time because you know their the perception is that the rates are going to come back down to what they were, or their hope is. And so that's right, a good hope. It's a good hope. Um, but, you know, overall, I think people are starting to come to the realization that, you know, five and sixes are here to stay and they have to, you know, the buyers have to deal with that. And they're, you know, they're easing their way in. They're not jumping in and sellers are really not selling unless they have to or unless they had a major amount of equity and they have to move out of state for relocation. I mean, it's just it's it's overall things are, you know, cut in half. How do we get a D from relocation? I mean, it's, it's, you can't get a D out of relocation. Delocation. <laughs> <laughs> we can do okay. that when people move from California. There you go. Yeah. Okay. So, so the bottom line here, what, what I'm getting at is the reason I think that we're not going to see massive, we're not going to see that 2009 price drop is we don't have a huge amount of supply. Right. And, you know, because that's got to have a catalyst. Right. And, the demand is going to stay because people are still getting older. They're still mm -hmm. getting married. They're still having babies. I believe we've hit an equilibrium. We've actually hit a point where the supply and the demand are, are kind of equivalent right now. And, you know, it's, you know, moving forward, let's hope it stays that way for a good long time because it's, you know, we, people are, if the interest rate goes higher, it definitely, you know, people are, are in escrow canceling escrows. I mean, that's like rates are up cancellations happen. And again, the equilibrium is our local market. So if you're a realtor in San Francisco or San Diego or Los Angeles, it may be different. It, you're you know. talking night and day difference. 26% housing prices drop in those local markets. Yeah, so there's no equilibrium there. But if you're in New Jersey or Maine, Vermont, New York, and there's only a 2% price drop, then the sellers still have the, the upper hand. In those markets, you know, I was looking like I, I mentioned uh, before we went on air, and then I mentioned a little bit a second ago that uh, uh, about a, a property area that I was looking at, just watching. And on one of the tools that you and I both use, um, they're showing the market action there is a 55. 55. 55. Price drop? No. So what they're basically saying is they, they're calling it a strong seller's market. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. So, and, and we both use a, a yeah, service Altos. called Altos Research. Yep. Right. So I yep. see that you guys post that for your area. It's a great, great tool. But again, I'm going to share with you because I can. It is a, even though it's the best tool out there that I see, it's still backwards looking. It is. It is. Now I agree. Right. Yep. So if you're going to want great information, now if you go, if you want information on your zip code, and, and we, we constantly do, so I can put in here Temecula, which is where Kelly and Sean are from, and it tells us that these it's a slight seller's market. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you concur? Yes. Oh yeah. It's slight. But the the housing okay. prices are slowly increasing. But slowly. Look at, but slowly. look at the amount of um, decreases in the prices. Price decreased thirty nine percent. Right. Yeah. And and as a na na nationally, I think the last I saw was thirty three point seven or something. Right. Like Average. That. Yeah. So. You got to talk to a local professional who really understands the market is the bottom line, because we can give you all these stats, but what's really happening in the market. And again, this is what's on the market right now. What's coming. Professionals understand that part of it as well. You continue our conversation. We are chatting with Sean and Kelly Malone, reliable realty. They're, they're based in the Temecula area. Do you cover just Temecula or anywhere else? No, we, I mean, Southwest Riverside County is our focus, but San Diego. Okay. We even well. sold in Long Beach and Los Angeles, yeah. Orange County. I mean, our license is considered California, so we... You can go, <laughs> go wherever the, wherever the license, license will business travel. Takes us. <laughs> there you go. And you guys are traveling all over. You know, one of the things that I, I enjoy with that in our conversations is you guys do travel quite a bit, you know, for, for real estate purposes. Yes. And you're able to share different ideas of what's going on around the, around the state and around the country. With what's going on with other real estate professionals yeah we're constantly moving and traveling and and meeting with other people in other markets and hearing stories from other things so it's just how it feeds back into how we do our business i think locally. we went to we, we attended five real estate conferences last year alone just yeah five last year five and so we we did quite a bit of traveling but we are learning from people across the country and in our localized markets and you know 
look, our the only thing constant in real estate is change, right? Sure. So, uh, you know, we're we're hearing from other people. I mean, this is my 27th year in real estate. Must have started it too. <laughs> yes, yes. That's it. Um, 27th and, year. And okay. Constantly reinventing myself. It's not you never arrive. I mean, my biggest years were 2005, uh, 2008. You know, through 2010, 11, I'm selling 300 a year. There, you know, it's you, it it would be difficult to maintain that at any stretch. So in the market, because it's, there's an ebb and flow, it's, you've got to adapt and keep up with what's going on. So we, what we've learned from, you know, agents lately, uh, of late that everybody across the country is, whether they've been, you know, major success, they're the top producer in their, you know, their areas. Um, everybody is going, um, everybody's experiencing a, a flatter market than what we've been accustomed to. So we've got to step up our game. It, it, so now, real estate has been one of the well, one of the areas. There's a few of them that you, know, you always hear about the eighty twenty rule, and I've always said real estate's probably ninety five five. It's ninety five five, right? So yes, there's it used to be eighty twenty. Now it's ninety five five. Correct. You see a lot of agents washing out right now. Yes. Oh yeah. So yes. that's probably my opinion. It's probably good for the marketplace. Well, uh, I mean, I don't wish <laughs> ill on anybody. It was it was really cute because of the Tom Ferry um, seminar we were just at. They had a uh, he actually asked the question to the audience. Um, how you better explain people... who Tom Ferry is. Oh, Tom Ferry, radio audience probably he's, doesn't he's know. A real estate mentor, yeah, real estate mentor and coach. Yeah. Coach. coach. Okay, yeah. and so um, he asked the audience, you know, how many people have been in real estate for ten years or less, and so three quarters of the audience raised their hand, and then he put up a slide from. Um, the movie, gosh, I can't think. Um, and it said, Winter is coming. And it's this, oh, it was the uh, House of House of Game of Thrones, Game of Thrones, Game of Thrones okay. Game of Thrones. And it was a you know, and I, you know, we kind of got a giggle out of it because they haven't been through a tough market, and so it is, it's rough. For In the last that are new. four years, a lot of real estate agents were able to come on, and the market was just brimming, overflowing, and so they were able to quit their main jobs. Make a good living, and if they were if they're decent at, you know, show, showing skills and other skills, follow up. Yeah, they, they could make a good living. Well, that's dried up, and so one of the things didn't take a whole lot to make a good living in real estate no. during the pandemic. No, you have no. a pulse. You yeah, there, you go. there you go. That's yeah. it. Because of quantitative easing, there was so much money in the market, and the home prices were soaring because there's so much activity, and that's gone. So now you have to know what you're doing. You got to know you what do. you're doing. You got to know how to negotiate. You've got to have the right mm -hmm. contacts, and you've you've got to. I mean, daily, you. It's not a matter of doing what you feel like doing. You've got to do the hard stuff. It's interesting that you say that, Kelly, because one of the the keys that I talk about is we don't really need a real estate agent to find a property. Not anymore. Not anymore. No. What we need them for is the negotiation. Yeah, the contract and the contract no. and yeah. and knowing who to talk to when you've got a problem. Well, how to solve problems. Problem solving skills are, are probably 90% of a transaction, really. It, Interesting. It's, you know, you're, you're finding, you, you, you have the, the, the people marry the house, which is great. But in the meantime, you are negotiating on their behalf for the best price. But also uh, there's issues that come up all the time. And so, you know, resolving those issues to make everybody happy and cohesive in the transaction, including working with the other agent involved, is you know that's the outcome you're looking for. You want a good outcome for everybody involved, and so that is that's you know it's communication, it's negotiation, and you know it's it's not just selling a house. One of the challenges I hear all the time, especially for because we we generally don't get, and nothing against newbies, but we don't don't get a whole lot of newbies here, right? Because I want to bring real experience and and education. I, the newbies I think are great because they they need mentors. Yes, yes. Yeah. Right? Just like anything, you know, I don't I don't understand why in real estate, you know, you get a license and go out and 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 claim that you know what you're doing, helping somebody buy a castle, and I don't care whether it's a $200,000 castle or a $2 million castle. Right. Mm -hmm. It's still a castle. But you don't have to have a, there's no internship or required residency or something like that. The barrier to entry to get a real estate license or to practice real estate is is zero pretty much. I mean, you've got it you pass a test. And because you I, never use again, I, I've trained you well, never use it information. I tell people, flush it. has nothing yeah, to do with the reality it. of being a real estate agent. But the people that I've trained over the years, um, you know, they're they understand the significance of, of learning the contract backwards and forwards. And, you know, having the you know, you have a license and it's a responsibility and you can be sued. 
So it, it's that's an interesting thought that you have a license to be responsible. Yeah, well, you, have yes, you have to have ownership. You, you, they're going to come back on you, and so you really need to up your game. And one of the we, we at the, again, I'm uh, on your coattails. Yeah, Tom Ferry thing that we were at the road. I've heard that that you're on our coattails. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, one of the ladies that was up there, she's 84 years old. One of the speakers, and uh, her name was Maxine. I might get her last name wrong. Gertie uh, from Berkshire Hathaway in La Jolla, and she was talking about reinventing herself. She she has this huge brokerage. They've done so much, and here she's been in the business for 40 years, and she's got to go back, as she stated, to her Rolodex. And what was really interesting that tells you that she's been in really been in the business for 40 years. If she's talking about a Rolodex, right, right, right. And so <laughs> she's, it's scary enough that we knew what she was talking about. Exactly. So, so but a lot of people in the room didn't. <laughs> oh yeah, they. We had were money. running around with they were heads cut off Rolodex. for three years. There's just so much business. There's so much to be done. And there's so many people coming into the market that's saying, hey, I'm young. I'm a newbie. Can you mentor me? And like with anything, if, if, you're, re if you're a knowledgeable person in baseball and you see a kid throwing a tomato at 109 miles an hour, hey, maybe we should probably uh, get him over here and start throwing a baseball. So you, you can see in new people that are coming on the market their own personal skills, soft skills or anything, but ownership. If they have some sense of ownership, right off the bat, they're 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 fifty percent over all other agents. Well, here's one of the things that that I just took away from what you're saying, though. Also, is so many people could go out and do 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 real estate in the last few years without a problem. Right. You guys probably saw hundreds of contracts that were done, and you got to wonder: was it a kindergarten that wrote this contract? Oh, they didn't fill it out. Well. We'd, Oh so, so the <laughs> we, we do offer a real estate academy, yep. and that real estate academy holds what we hold four times a year, and is six week program. It is intense, nine to one o'clock every Saturday, and we go through the contract backwards and forwards, and you know all of the um, disclosures, marketing, social media, everything. But you know we really get intense with with the details and the, the contract, contract, the devil's in the detail. And I cannot tell you how many contracts come across my desk that are not filled out properly. They have no, the, the agent on the other side of the transaction has nobody helping them, nobody coaching them. And it's, it's, it's terrible. It's a bad it's called malpractice. It's bad for the consumer. Well, it's really bad for the consumer. You don't it have is, an experienced and, agent. You know, when we come back, I want to talk more about this concept as well, because one of the things I've heard and a takeaway that I've got, and maybe you should be asking the same question. If you're thinking about buying or selling in real estate, is Kelly just said you've been doing this 27 years yeah. and last year you went to five conferences to learn more. Right. Always. So you're teaching people, but also realize that in order to stay sharp in your craft, you've got to go out there and continue learning too. I'm and a tomorrow student we're, of real estate. Tomorrow we're heading to Vegas and, for another. Mm -hmm. Oh, I thought you are going to the craft table. <laughs> That's <laughs> Sports book. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, so the bottom line here is if you're, if you think that you can do this, you know, just in your spare time, or you want to hire your neighbor's best friend's dog walker to take care of selling your house, you may not come out with the outcome you're looking for. We're going to talk more with Kelly and Sean. Malone. And can I add something to that? Yes, sir. So you guys are listening. If you're thinking about buying a home, call Ron. This is critical right now. We are dealing with a lot of mortgages and a lot of offers from people that come in and they have to repair their credit. They, we don't think about what's on our credit. We very rarely even run our credit. So listen to what he's saying. Go get your credit run. Just check. Make sure everything's copacetic. Thank you. So I want to get into the weeds here a little bit. Something that that um, very few people know. I mean, if you're in the industry, you should know this. So Kelly, you have, you run a you're, you're the broker of record at your company. I'm the owner broker. Yes. Owner broker. Uh -huh. So when a listing comes in, regardless of who lists a property in your office, right. Whose listing is it? Mine. It's yours. Yes. Right? Because you're the broker in the office. Yep. At the end of the day, if there's something wrong with it, who's responsible? Me. You. Yep. So you've got a vested interest in making sure that everybody that's in your office it's, knows what the heck they're doing. Is very well trained. Absolutely, yes. So if somebody's out there and you don't have that kind of training, right? If they're not getting that training, not only are they in, they're, they're liable, they're looking for trouble. But, you know, because the, the consumer, not only the consumer is going to gonna you know be harmed, but it can be somebody's entire livelihood. Oh, yeah. Yes. So, look, there's a lot of great agents out there. They're flashy. They've got great social media presence. They've got all that down. But if you don't understand the contract and how to protect your client, you are doing them a disservice. 
And so because, you know, with I have brand new agents all the time and I have mentors and coaches that work with them as well because I'm only one, me. Sure. But um, we spend the time making sure we review their contracts before they send them out or we go with them to the buyer-seller consultation to make sure they're giving the right information. Um, I was almost sued once by a, a client because my agent, this was in 2002, my agent gave incorrect information regarding 1031 exchange. Wow. Yeah. And that would have been that we resolved it, thankfully, but that would have been a huge hit. And and the irony is, is most, most good agents that I come across, most lenders that I come across, when it comes to 1031 exchange, number one, you want a ten, good 1031 exchange agent, right? The, yep. the person that handles that, not the, not the realtor, but I mean the, the firm. In, intermediary. There's an intermediary. Right. Intermediary and, to, huh? and you're probably going to say, you know, you should be talking to CPA about getting tax advice. Yes. All and yes. Um, CPA first and decide if you're going to, you know, sell your property and exchange it. And then that money can never touch your hands. So, you know, you can exchange into several properties, um, but, you know, there are rules and regulations of how that works. And the but, bottom line there is, is that what, what, I, what I'm hearing and what I'm suggesting is if, you're, if you've got a real estate agent that thinks they know everything, they probably know a lot less than you do. Right. They're, right. 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 I mean, because you, you've probably done more than your share of 1031s. Yes. And, but, and, our, and for ourselves oh, oh, as for well. Ourselves. Right. Yeah. And. and you know, I, I've done been re investing in real estate for a long time. I didn't realize that, you know, I'd probably never do a 1031 again in my life because I know a better way. Not that I understand it, but I know who does understand it, right? Because I know that I can go and look at an older tax law that's not on, on the crosshairs of the government and use those things. But I put people in touch with the people that are experts in that because you're an expert in real estate you probably don't go and spend the 30 or 40 or 50 hours every year in tax law. No, no. And ironically enough, it's kind of funny. This just came to me as we're talking, right? If we want to go and enter into a contract with somebody, are you, are you licensed to go and enter into a, a contract to, I don't know, to, to breed dogs? Is there a contract required to? <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't know. There's governing bodies. But you, but you, okay. For the breeds, but, yeah. But that's not a trick question. No, no, right? Yeah, no, no, no. And neither, no. There, but you'd go to a, you'd go to an attorney, yes, right, who has to go through so many years of school. Yet, in a in a one hour um, licensing course, people are then licensed to be able to go and, and give uh, guidance on a contract for three or four or five hundred thousand dollars million dollar houses. Yes, right. It's just crazy. So when you talk about having your real estate academy. To me, that's just, you know, it almost should be mandatory for, for every agent to go through something. It like really should because, um, you know, I love, I have trained most of my agents from their beginning. So they didn't have any bad habits when they came. So uh, that's my favorite. That's <laughs> yeah. my favorite. So, yeah, you know, I've trained them, kind of groomed them. They are um, part of our fa family, really. And But they take the contract very seriously and, and they have pride in that knowledge of the contract. And it changes every year? Yeah, and the, yeah, the contract really? changes all the time. And, and, and Sean, you run a, a, a escrow company as yes. well. Celebration Escrow. And it probably makes the escrow agent's job a lot easier when you've got a trained real estate agent If those submitting listings a contract. are coming in, yes. <laughs> From outside, sometimes there's barriers or problems on the contract. But yes, yeah. Right, because because yeah. the escrow company, most people don't understand. We, we should do a whole show on escrow even one time. Yeah, that'd be great. Right, because all the escrow company really is, is the, well, not, not an NFL referee, but third they're a referee. Party. Yeah, we're just a third party. <laughs> Third party that's basically looking at the contract and saying, "This is what it says." Yep. Keeps things legal, like and handles we, the money, handles and, the money, and is neutral. It's Switzerland, yeah. yeah. And you've got Switzerland. a good deal that you're offering too. We do. Have Tell fun. us about it. Seller side, we'll give you a free free escrow on, on the, the seller side. On the seller side, free escrow on the seller side. Celebration.com. Celebrationescrow.com. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's for anybody that wants a free free escrow on the seller side. Absolutely. So mention it. Okay. So send an mention, email. Mention, uh, Ron Siegel Radio. Ron Siegel awesome. Radio. Tell him. Tell him you got it from here. From here. So that, that's a great deal. Uh, in, any amount too. So so normally that would be two to four thousand dollars savings, but on something big that could be six to eight to ten thousand dollars savings. In Orange County, it's side. like eight to ten. Right. <laughs> so that, that's that's a huge money back to the seller. So and 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 that so that could be used. You know, you, you might use that money to, to buy to use points to buy down the interest rate. Right. Yeah. Right, to make it a, yeah. to, to help with the uh, to, to get more people into buying your property, get more money for your property. 
get more money, you're, you're netting more money and you can obviously use that however you need to, but you know, in, in today's market, everybody wants to net, you know, the maximum and, and look, we, I mean, this is a, a deal that we don't take lightly. You know, we, you know, people that use us, we are um, customer service oriented to the point where uh, Monica is our, our um, escrow manager and she gives the white glove treatment. So, you know, we, we want people to give us a shot and, you know, this is our way of an entry, entry, you know, level experience. Now, I don't know a whole lot about escrow companies because I've only used a couple, right? I do, you know, as a lender, we don't, we just kind of follow, follow along, right? Unless it's refis or things like that. But right. for the most part, you know, we just follow, follow who the, the agents all, all want. Is there a geographic limitation for an escrow company? We're, we're, we're an independent, so we're all of California. All of California. All, entire California. Okay, so if we're looking for that. Uh, Eureka to San Diego. Eureka to San Diego. Why Eureka? Why Eureka is even further north? I, well, because, I mean, we just drove all the way from Seattle. All, oh, we should tell that story. It was awesome. Okay, anyway, <laughs> we, we just drove in 23 hours from Seattle to San Diego. So we went through that entire area. So you got so to I, see it all. Like, Eureka! <laughs> you got to see it all. Yeah. Great information. If you want to meet uh, Sean and Kelly Malone, give me a call at 800 306 1990. 800-306-1990. More than happy to put you in touch with them. Great agents right here in Southern California. The market's changing. We've been talking about that. You need to have an agents that understand the market that are out there ed getting educated on it. And they're the best. So give us a call. We'll put you in touch with them.